How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Guess what? I'm calling it. I'm calling it guys. <laughs> We're saying it's done. This is the peated Irish whiskey. Let's fire the still up. Oh, hold up, hold up. We got a problem. Well, actually we got two. One, it's getting kind of dark in here. Hold on. That's better. But number two, and more importantly, if you remember back, I actually fermented that on the grain. So I need to figure out a way of separating the liquid from the grain without wasting too much liquid. Because a lot of that liquid is going to be soaked up into the grain. Hmm. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's what you're into, if you enjoy distilling, you want to get into distilling, or you just really appreciate knowing what goes into a craft drink, hit the subscribe button down below, it'll be awesome to have you on board. Alright guys, I know it has been a while and we've made you wait on this one, but honestly guys, it was the yeast's fault, not mine. <laughs> This ferment took way longer than it should have, and honestly, I can't really pinpoint exactly what went wrong. Do a few things to give it a kick in the pants. Uh, one, I heated things up. Two, I gave it a little bit of a mix. Three, I actually made a bit of a yeast bomb with some more live yeast, a whole lot of nutrients, uh, and I aerated and threw that in. One of those three things worked, and finally, we're down to 10.09. I was hoping for something more like 1004 but it is what it is so here we are guys i'm ready to start distilling but like i said in the intro the problem is that i cannot be putting grain particles into my boiler because i don't have a steam setup so now i'm left with trying to get the liquid out of the fermenter into the boiler and leave all the grain behind and the thing is we've gone to all this trouble to create that awesome stuff i don't want to be leaving 15 20 percent or whatever it would happen to be behind so i need to figure out a way to make that relatively efficient anyway let's get on to it as you can see team it is mostly clear on top but there are little particles floating around that i don't really want going into the still and that is where this comes in so basically this is just a fine mesh bag with a drawstring on top and a toggle to uh, to hold it tight I'll show you how I'm going to use it. It's really nothing all that special guys, I'm just simply putting it into the boiler through the 4 inch port, tying it on top so it can't fall in, and I'm going to scoop the wash out of the bucket, I'm using two buckets like this so I don't dribble all over the place, pour it into the still, and then you can squeeze the bag out inside the still itself to make sure you get all the liquid and none of the little bits of grain. At this stage I have done two whole stripping runs already uh, and I haven't really hit the grain bed at all but I'm just starting to fill the still up for the third. I've got maybe 10-15 litres into the still and there's a whole lot of grain. Come on, show you. From here on in I can't use that same tactic anymore. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. The main one is that if you put a bag inside the still, fill into it and have it catch the grains, if it catches too much grain inside the still, inevitably the, uh, the bulk of the bag is actually going to be larger than the entrance of the still. The, uh, unless you've got you know one of those stills you can take the whole top off and if that happens you're in a bit of a conundrum uh, now you have grain inside the still inside a bag because it went in there in lots of little pieces that is now too big to get back out again ask me how I know about that <laughs> so I don't want to be doing that anymore but seeing as my still is partially charged and the elements are pretty much covered, I may as well run a little stripping run now. I do have something else I can put in there as well. Ooh, do you guys remember this? <laughs> this is the initial test batch for this run. So this has been sitting here, I don't even know, for maybe six weeks, seven weeks, and uh, it's obviously growing something, but it still smells really good. 
So I'm going to run it. Over there, I've got a little bit of a different problem where I've got grain sitting on the bottom, uh, almost like a, a pellicle, I guess it is even a pellicle sitting on top. So I'm going to do something a little bit different to try and not get all of that totally messed up. And that's where my good friend, the little auto siphon, is going to come in. Now this is obviously a little tiny one, it's like a little mini homebrew one. Um, but for that 30 litre fermenter, it's going to do an awesome job. If you guys do not know what these are, essentially it is a racking cane that will um, start its own siphon. So you just pump it a couple of times and Bob's your uncle cool, away you go. If you're interested and you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll put a couple of links down below for Amazon. Uh, I'll see if I can find a bigger one as well, because uh, I need a big one too. <laughs> so that worked well. I've now done three hole stripping runs, and it is time to get on to straining the rest of the grain. The hard work, the reason for this video to exist. Now, I have to apologize to you guys. I had planned on talking about a few other ways to do this while straining it with my brew in a bag bag, my Biab bag. I forgot my Biab bag got holes in it and I threw it out. <laughs> I haven't ordered another one yet. <laughs> so I struggled through, I managed to get, I won't lie to you, it wasn't a full still worth of, <laughs> worth of wash to run. It was about half, three quarts maybe. Uh, with this tiny little bag, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> now guys, I have ordered another brew in a bag bag because I do have another project ready to go. Thank you Patreons for helping me out with the recipe there. Oh and by the way guys, if you do want more inside information, sort of um, background information or behind the scenes information, a couple of ways you can get it. One is to sign up with Team Awesome over on Patreon. Uh, two is to sign up on the mailing list down below. Anyway, so I needed a brew in a bag bag anyway, so I have ordered one and I will be finishing the rest of the run like that. But let's talk about some of the other ways that we can do this too. Number one, a couple of the guys, actually two guys, got in touch with me and said essentially the, said essentially they take a PVC pipe, a copper pipe, a stainless steel pipe, whatever it happens to be, they perforate the sides of it, drill holes into it, wrap it in a muslin bag, stick it down the middle of the grain and siphon out of the middle of it. I thought that was a pretty damn ingenious idea actually. <laughs> And if I wasn't such a lazy mother, I would have tried it myself. I do see one small problem with this, and that that is that it uh, doesn't in any way squeeze the grain out. So you're going to be leaving a lot of alcohol, a lot of congeners on the table or in the fermenter as it may be. I guess what you could do, potentially, is basically sparge it. And all I'm saying here is siphon out as much liquid as you can, add some more water in, and then siphon it out again, just to basically wash the grain. Which leads to number three. Just do it right, as the beer guys would say the first time. Don't ferment on the grain and separate the grain from the wash way back when we did the mash. And I'm thinking of setting up a relatively large mash tun with either a manifold or a false bottom. Uh, let me know what you think about that team. If you'd be keen to see it, let me know. And the fourth way to deal with this problem would be to set up a still that can handle just distilling this goop, this slop, out of the fermenter. And that would be a steam injection or a steam jacket system. Now this intrigues me. This sounds really, really fun to me, guys. I think that this would open up all sorts of possibilities. But it is no small project. I'll have to have a think about that one. Anyway guys, that's it for me this week. I'm sorry that I let you down and didn't really get to show you exactly how I was uh, doing this. I almost scrapped the video, just did it myself and made something else. But I thought this is kind of what happens in this hobby. Things don't quite go right. Uh, you do something wrong, you make a mistake, you figure out a way around it, and you keep moving forward. That, to me, is essentially the essence of chasing the craft. Also, also, I think it's kind of good for me to uh, screw up on camera every now and again. It stops my head from swelling too much. <laughs>
All right, team, I need to jump in here real quick and say a huge, huge thank you to Team Awesome over here. Thank you so much to all of the Patreons. You are literally the reason that this channel is able to expand, do new things, or grow in any way, shape, or form. So honestly, team, thank you so much. Also, a huge welcome to the new Patreons. Just to let you know, these names get updated once a month. I haven't forgot you. Your name will be there soon. So anyway guys, thanks for hanging out with me this week. I hope you had some fun. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to help the channel out a little bit guys, have a think about where you could share this video or who else you could show it to. And if you really, really enjoyed the video and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe down below and ring the bell notification. That's it for me this week guys. I'll catch you next time. See ya.